<laughs> uh, I figured I'd split this live event up into two parts so this wasn't too long. I really wanted to get that headspace by itself because uh, it's a very important topic and I wanted to make sure that it was by itself completely. So we literally just got done with live part four full length resizing. I'm going to get the Get this up here so I can see your chats. And here you guys thought I was done. <laughs> thought I was done. <laughs> Turn the volume down here. So I'm gonna wait a little while for more people to log in. Like I said, uh, I wanted to split this up. I wanted to really get that headspace by itself on its own video. So for those that missed the video they can concentrate on just headspace because in part four that we literally just got done doing and I just finished resizing all those pieces in part four so you can see it right here. Um, I really wanna get that by itself because in the reloading world, headspace is the big white elephant in the room in regards to making sure it's done correctly. Um, I can't stress that enough. And it could be the most frustrating part of the reloading process for the new reloader. Um, so I really wanted to get that by itself. And it looks like good old Doug B is back. So for those that missed uh, part four and couldn't watch that tonight, might, might have to watch tomorrow. I really wanted to get that by itself. And that's why I'm doing this in a separate video, separate live event. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit longer here for more people to log in. Good old Doug B is back in the house. And it looks like we're up to about four people. And what I really wanted to do here is go over die maintenance, how I store my dies so they don't rust. I also want to go over press maintenance. Uh, press maintenance is very important, especially if you want consistent headspace bumps and consistent seating of your bullets. Uh, making sure you're greasing that press correctly and also making sure you're Cleaning your dies is really important in regards to uh, getting consistent headspace bumps and making sure you get consistent seating of those bullets. So let's wait a little bit longer here. We're up to six people so far. And if you're just joining us, just like I said, I wanted to get this in its own separate part here. Uh, for those that can't watch this live event today, they can go back on watch those individual videos rather than watching one humongous long two hour video of part four and part five here. So, so like I said, if you are just joining us, uh, we got part one, part two, part three. We just finished part four, literally half hour, hour ago, and we are now up to part five. So if you guys are out there and you're watching, make yourself known. Um, but yeah, I just want to go over die maintenance, press maintenance, at least what I do, and then get this brass that's covered in lube back in the wash for its last and final wash, its second wash. Um, so yeah, while we are waiting for more people to come in here, let's, I'm gonna quick grease up my press. I haven't done this in some time, and I figured I would get this done today and get it done live, so I need to get this done. And typically what I like to do is you're definitely gonna need a grease gun, at least when it comes to the Hornady AP press. And I just like to get a dirty rag here. I like to clean the excess grease off. And if you have a Hornady lock and load AP press, you're in luck. So I haven't done this in some time. So I'm just gonna clean this up quick. And this is something I do, not all the time, but once in a blue moon, I'll do this. So I figure as long as I'm going over die maintenance, I might, might as well go over uh, how I maintain my press. And I will just clean up the old grease that's on here. And if you are over camming your press to get a consistent headspace bump, I don't. I recommend not severely over camming your press, but I like to somewhat overcam my press to get a consistent headspace bump. And if you are doing that, you better make sure you got a properly maintained press and make sure it's greased really well. 
and I'm just cleaning off the old grease here. Uh, let's get this shell plate out of here. And if you guys are out there watching, uh, make yourself known. Jump in the chat box, say hello. Like I said, if you're just joining, you're like, what the heck, he was just live. I wanted to do a separate live event to get this on a separate video for people that can't watch these live events today. Have to watch this video another time. So let's get this out of here. You have a horny lock and load press. You are in luck. So let's raise this up all the way. Just gonna clean off this old grease. And I might do this about every, I don't know, every third month or something. I don't do it all the time. It just really depends on how much you're reloading. As of late, I've been too busy shooting videos and making videos and going out to the range. But being that we're on lockdown and it is raining outside here in Wisconsin, I might also get this done and at least show you guys that have a horny lock and load press, how, at least how I do this. So, so I cleaned off most of the excess grease. Uh, make sure to get the cam parts here, clean off the, all this excess grease out of here. All this old grease, I should say. And grab my grease gun. Alaska one Andy, hello again, my friend. So, so you can see this little ring right here that captures the grease and keeps the ram uh, greased. I usually will raise this up until I start to see grease starting to come out of that ram right there. The second I see it pop out, I stop. And let's make sure you guys are live. Yep. Cam, Cam413. Hello, sir, and everyone. So we are just quickly going over press maintenance, die maintenance. So, all right, got one more here. And that's it for the grease. So you got a nice consistent ring of grease right there. I'm gonna clean off this excess grease up here. That's good for that. And then usually what I'll do is I'll spray down the top of my top plate here. And usually I'll take out the everything, the, the primer uh, shuttle area and everything. I'm not gonna do that right now on camera. Otherwise we'd be here for another half hour. But at least for the top, I like to clean this off with horny one shot uh, dry cleaner, gun cleaner and lube. It's like uh, I'll show you here. So essential things that at least I like to have is non-chlorinated brake cleaner, G96, not only for cleaning my guns and preserving my guns, but WD-40, and I'll show you why I use WD-40 here in a little bit, and dry lube here, this one-shot horny dry lube, that stuff works really good. And Usually what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of G96 in here. Not too much, you don't have to go overboard. I don't like to use grease in here. Um, just a good oil, clean this off. And if I had more time, I'd take the whole primer section out, make sure that's clean. If you want consistent seating your primary, you really need to do that. Um, but in regards to my actual dyes, the way I store my dyes so they don't get rust on them is I actually store them in a Ziploc bag. And I actually keep a little chunk of cardboard that actually fell out here. And I get a little bit of cardboard or a note card of some sort and I douse that cardboard with WD-40. 
both sides. Make sure it's nice and wet with WD-40 on both sides. I'll actually spray it inside the Ziploc bag itself. I'm going to get this heater die out of here. <clears throat> spray inside with some WD-40. Work that around a little bit inside the bag. Put the chunk of cardboard in there. And if you do this and you store your dies that way, I got my cedar and my resizer, those dies will never rust on you. And I've been doing that method for years and I don't have a speck of rust on my dies and I actually store them that way. So all my dies are in there in Ziploc bags with WD-40 and a little bit of a note card or chunk of cardboard inside um, a Ziploc bag. So here is the brass I just got done resizing and every single one is consistently, I literally measure every single one and they are all exactly 1.2135. I mean, right on the money. Doesn't get any more consistent than that. Uh, so being that we just got done using, um this cedar die and i went and unset this again because apparently i'm a glutton for punishment and i got my cedar die if you guys want consistent headspace bumps and consistent seating of your bullets with your cedar you better make sure you clean your dies and if you don't clean them regularly your headspace bumps will be all over the place, and I guarantee that. So, um, so let's get this resizing die broke down. Wow, that thing is stubborn. Let's put a little persuasion to this die, I guess. I guess I locked it down too too much. Of course, it's got to do this while we're live, right? Just don't want to mar this up too much. There we go. Jeff Calvert's back in the house again in the year 2025, <laughs> saying hello again. All right, so we got that taken apart. So we're just gonna quick clean. Make some room for myself. Now what I typically use is brake cleaner and dry lube. I personally don't use oil at all for my dyes. I, use, I don't use this at all and I use strictly brake cleaner to initially clean the dye, especially if it's really, really dirty. And then I follow up with some dry lube. And I'm a huge fan of this horny dry lube in regards to actually lubing your brass. I'm a huge fan of use, using this one shot case lube from Hornady. Um, uh, but in regards to the sizer, usually what I'll do is I'll spray this down inside with some brake cleaner. And grab some Q-tips over here and I just clean this up inside. With a Q-tip, you can see it's pretty dirty and that's just from one resizing event. And And then I follow up with the inside with dry lube. On the outside. And clean the stem. Follow up with some dry lube for storage. And that's it. So if you're new, 
hopefully that helps you out and that's good for storage I'm going to do the same for the cedar die so Now, one thing with the cedar dye, at least with this horny dye, you don't want to soak this um, rubber washer too much. Uh, you definitely don't want to get brake cleaner on that washer. And we are going to pop out our seeding stem here. And usually for the seeding stem, what I like to do is grab a Q-tip here and I cut off the tip of a Q-tip. So something like that, cut off both ends. I use one end for brake cleaner, one end for uh, dry lube. So we're just gonna clean out the inside with some brake cleaner here. Have another Q-tip. If you want consistent seating results, you really gotta make sure your dyes are clean. little bit of brake cleaner on this and that I cut off I'm going to clean inside the stem and we're going to clean the stem off really good now if you're getting rings around your bullet when you are seeding them there's a good chance that your die is really dirty it just needs to be cleaned um, or you have too much neck tension it's one of the two so if you're getting while you're seeding the bullet and you notice a ring around the bullet and you definitely don't want that it definitely screws up the bullet coefficient of that round uh, it's probably because your die is dirty or you got too much neck tension so it's one of the two um so yeah we're gonna follow up here with some dry lube so for storage purposes outside of the die body Use the other end of my cutoff Q-tip for the inside of the stem. Oh, probably help if I put the rubber washer on, huh? Duh. said don't get too much oil or anything on that rubber washer and that's about it and then I'll store that inside my Ziploc bag that's saturated with WD-40 inside and you don't even need a humidif uh, dehumidifier in your really room I don't use one I think they're actually more of a fire risk than they are good um, and I just store my dyes that way and none of my dyes I can show them to you if you like, but there is not a single spot of rust on my dies. So put those away for storage. All right, so I'm gonna just quick throw this shell plate back on, and then we are gonna get this brass into the next or second round of wash. And I'm gonna show you what I do with no stainless steel media. Um, So if you guys are out there watching, make yourself known, jump in the chat box. Ah, good old Alaska one in the same total spit shine. So Jeff Calvert saying, are the ranges still open your way? I'm sure they are. And I'm sure there's guys out there shooting. Um, but you know what? I'm gonna go to my in-laws. He just opened up a brand new uh, shooting range and he's literally next door. He's not far away at all And man that runs nice and smooth now 
And you're gonna see that here soon. I'm, that rifle range is awesome. It's only 100 yards, but really that's all I need for doing you know, generic OCW load testing and basic firearm reviews. And it is awesome. You know, public, it's not public, it's private land. It's at my in-laws. Uh, it's covered with trees, so there's no sunlight. Uh, in there, so it should keep the mirage down. Uh, I plan on lining that thing with an insane amount of steel targets. And it's gonna be awesome. And we already got an electrical spool out there for shooting off of. Eventually we're gonna build a bench. Um, and it's gonna be awesome. You're gonna see that here eventually, here in these upcoming firearm reviews. And if you didn't catch that, I believe in part one or part two of this live reloading event, I actually have the PSA 5.56 18 inch upper that has the cold hammer forge FN barrel on it. And that's coming with the PSA branded one to six power scope. And that is the next firearm review series. And I even have more firearm review series coming above and beyond that, that I really can't talk about right now, but that is coming here soon. And I also plan on reloading for that upper, same thing, but 5.56 or 223, whatever you want to call it. Um, so Shooter59 is just rolling in the house. Hello from Fort Worth, Texas. Shooter59 says the Texas gun shops have been declared essential business by the Texas Attorney General, and just like it should be, man, that's awesome. So uh, if you're just joining in, uh, we literally just got done with part four here, and we are up to part five, and I just wanted to quick show some of you guys, especially if you're new to the game, uh, bri, a uh, little bri, die and press maintenance of what I do so they don't rust out. And we got this brass resized, so this is all resized to exactly 1.2135. And we are going to get this in the Frankfurt Arsenal tumbler. And if you guys have been watching this series, you know that I do not use stainless media anymore. I actually took all the stainless steel pins out and I got them in storage up here. I don't plan on using them ever again because <laughs> I hate separating, separating uh, stainless steel pins, especially for uh, six millimeter and 6.5 millimeter um, bullets because they're notorious for getting stuck in the case mouth opening. So I just stopped using them all together. I'm gonna show you here what I do here in a little bit. Now, if you're not familiar with this series, in part one, we put that brass in its first, first round of cleaning just enough to get the brass clean enough for the resizing process. And there's a whole second round of cleaning we're about to do here soon. In the first round, we only used Dawn dish soap only, but in the second round here that I'm about to show you, we're gonna use Dawn dish soap plus Let Me Shine. And that Let Me Shine gets the water to an acidic environment. And that acidic environment is what really makes the brass sparkle, but it also helps clean those primer pockets in the inside of the case body. And it's really important that you use that Let Me Shine, otherwise that will not happen. Um, and you also need to use the hottest water you could possibly get out of your tap. So with that said, let's get this going. So let me get, get you guys over to the slop sink. So I'm gonna start the water so I can get the hottest water I possibly can. And get this towel out of the way so you guys can see what the heck's going on. So I'm gonna wait until I start to see steam rising. When I see that steam rising, I know it's hot enough. And it is so hot to the point where I can barely keep my finger on the water here. All right, so that's pretty darn hot. All right, so what I like to do is I don't use pins. I got an empty jug here. I'm gonna fill this up halfway.
So I'm gonna fill this up halfway with hot water. And the reason why I don't just dump my brass in there right from the get-go is the last thing you wanna do is dump brass in an empty jug like this. You're literally dropping the brass almost a full feet. And if one piece of brass, um, if you've got a pile of brass at the bottom and one piece falls down and nicks that case mouth opening, it could put a slight dent in it. One slight dent in your case mouth opening means you're, you're gonna either scratch or shave off part of that copper jacket of the bullet. So that's why I fill it up at least halfway with water. I got my uh, funnel here. So I'm gonna take my resized brass that is covered in lube. And that's why we're doing this. We're getting the lube off the brass from the resizing process. Whoa, geez, I'm trying to look in the camera. <laughs> Make sure I'm in picture, I'm dumping the brass and going against exactly what I just got on saying not to do. That's fine. So I'm gonna take this brass and dump it in so it's at least falling into water, just not an empty jug. All right. All right. Then I'm gonna put a good squirt of Dawn. I'd use Dawn only. Don't get some ultra knockoff brand from the dollar store. Use Dawn only. Nothing works like Dawn. You're gonna see how much I put in here. Here we go. And that's about it. You don't need much. It doesn't take it doesn't take that much. And I take a teaspoon. I do roughly about one and a half teaspoons or one good mound of this teaspoon. So it's a little mounded on it. So you can see that. If you do any more than that, your brass is going to turn <laughs> really pink. Uh, if you do any less than that, it's really not going to clean the brass. So. Uh, some of that just fell out there a little bit. So I'm going to dump in a little bit there. I don't have to be ultra scientific about it, but something like that. And then I like to fill this all the way up. Being that I don't use media, uh, I like to fill this damn near all the way full. All right, so you can see there, it's almost full. Hottest water and get out of the tap. Make sure these are nice and snug so you don't come back with brass and water all over your floor. And then put this on. I like to do roughly about an hour and a half to two hours. I'll do that later so you guys can hear what the heck I'm saying. But I usually do that for about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how much brass I'm reloading on the second wash. So the first wash, hottest water pot if possible, Dawn dish soap only, one hour, just enough to get the brass clean enough for the sizing process. And then the second round of cleaning here to, after the brass has been resized and to get the lube off the brass. Um, Dawn, dish soap, let me shine, hottest water, and roughly an hour and a half to two hours, maybe even more if you got an insane amount of brass you're putting in there. Say something over 100 pieces of brass. You might have to creep over that two hour mark if you're not using stainless steel media. Now, if you are using stainless steel media, definitely it's awesome. I find it to be a pain in the butt to separate that out, especially with 6.5 and six millimeter bullets. Now, with that said, I was using pins, and they do make Southern Shine stainless steel media that are shaved stainless steel pellets, and that does make a huge difference. But right now, this is working out so well for me that I just plan on not using any media at all, regardless if it's pins or Southern Shine. And it seems to be working really well. But with that said, you got to use that Let Me Shine during the second wash if you want those primer pockets marginally clean. So, um, so let me read some of your comments here for some of you guys that are rolling here. Um, so Wayne Purcell saying really good maintenance tips. Thank you, my friend. Uh, OCD Outdoors, use Southern Shine Media. So he just mentioned just what I got done saying. I use my Frankfurt, Frankfurt Arsenal dry media separator to remove the pins also. 
and I've been using citric acid instead of lemon shine. And those are really good tips. Uh, like I said, everyone's got a different method to their madness, and those sound like really, really good tips, if you, especially if you want to use uh, stainless steel media. So with that said, like I said, I wanted to get this off into a second uh, or the, another part of this live event so people didn't have to watch a two hour long video along with the resizing process. And I wanted to really get that part four by itself in the full length resizing. So people that are not watching these videos tonight can uh, go back and watch these individually. So with that said, do me a favor, jump over to Elster's Minute Americans. And that's exactly what this channel is eventually gonna become a live, this live all the time. And also a podcast with very knowledgeable people that we can all learn together in order to protect our rights and spread that knowledge onto the next generation. So jump over there if you could, please search or search in the search bar here for Elster's Minute Americans. And eventually once I get the thumbnail done, I'll have a link in the description box below, most likely tonight or tomorrow. And keep on scratching my back and I'll keep on scratching your back with this video content by not only subscribe, like, and share, hit that notification bell, become a Patreon, helps out more than you know, and I'll see you guys in the next video.